is a big goof. Oh, yeah, please do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a resting spot right now called Mad Men, and uh, <laughs> what's uh, that? <laughs> yeah, and uh, so it's been great. Uh, I mean, it's one of the many things that Mad Men has allowed me to do with my life is uh, pursue uh, projects that I believe in that aren't going to necessarily uh, be a big splash in the New York or LA scene. I think in a society like ours, where we value success over personal relationships uh, and uh, even uh, creative output, we really value uh, success and end product kind of uh, uh, ambition, if you will. Uh, this is a place that I think it's easier to withdraw to now in our society. Uh, we have more and more things available to us in our homes uh, via the many different types of media uh, that we have. And you really can uh, live a very isolated life. Uh, of, uh, you know, we talk a lot about Facebook in this play, uh, or a little bit about it. That idea that uh, that's what a lot of friendships are becoming now, you know. Uh, just a like on a Facebook and that's... Not even a like, thing. even if it's a friend of yours and you're just checking up and seeing baby pictures on, online. I mean, there was a time that you would make the uh, two-hour flight to wherever your friend lived to see the child in person. Now you might not meet the child till they're five because, well, can see them on Facebook. And so it, it, it uh, allows you to have a less personal and less intimate relationship with people. And so he lives in a world that's actually quite conducive to becoming a withdrawn, emotionally distant human being. And uh, he's taken advantage of it due to his, uh, uh, his fear of, of loving someone again out of losing them. You mentioned um, a little while that you connected a bit with Sebastian as a character because of this idea that success um, does cause one to sometimes feel disconnected. That's right. It does. And it, you also start to realize that there's a large percentage of the world that really just wants something from you. Even if it's just your, um, you know, your respect. They want it in a way that's different than their peer. And uh, it's taxing. Not that I am at Sebastian's level, but I've worked with people who have been at that level. and. Uh, it's very taxing to constantly have to be uh, uh, investigating people's motives. And uh, he doesn't trust people due to that fact. He knows that everyone wants something from him, you know. Uh, uh, people want money from him. His friends want him to help him get laid. Women want to use him to get their book published or because they want the experience of being with the man whose name is on the cover of a book. Uh, so these are all things that have shown him, as I said before, the other side of that, um, the other side of success, the side that uh, lots of people never really see. Well, if you were a recluse in 1750, you'd probably die pretty quickly of starvation unless you had a lot of friends who were coming to bring you food, to stoke your fire, to wash your clothes, to make sure you didn't get diseases. You really can live without friends. Sebastian, Pete Campbell, are they complete polar opposites? Are they similar in some respects? Well, they're both, I mean, I play both characters. It's elements of me, it's uh, char uh, uh, character points that I've uh, made choices about in my brain, so in that way, they both come from me. Pete Campbell longs very much to be admired by his peers and uh, respected by his, his elders and uh, have a, a firm place in the social world of New York City. Whereas Sebastian obviously cares nothing for that. Uh, but no, they're not polar opposites uh, because uh, they're me. Interesting. And so you, you see these characters as still you when you're playing them. Yeah. Different facets. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not, it's not a trick question, I'm just... No, I know it's not. I, it's just that, it, <laughs> you know, every actor has a different process. And I, I'm sure there's actors out there that really do separate themselves a lot from their characters. But that's just not, I'm not really capable of doing that. Uh, and I think even actors who do separate themselves entirely from their characters are still in there somewhere is the actor making that choice to do that with the character. And so in making that choice, that's that's them in the character. Uh, it's impossible to get away from yourself no matter 
what your job is, no matter what your hobby is. Uh, I spent a good portion of my life running away from myself. And uh, I think uh, part of being happy in life is realizing that you can't. <laughs> um, you mentioned that Facebook and social media plays mm. a role in this play. Mm. You've spoken you know, strongly on occasion about not having a Facebook page and right. not having a Twitter yeah. uh, account. Um, is, is the reason you shy away with this similar to the idea that, hey, people can just cope and, and not really, and take for granted friendships and things because technology makes us so convenient? Or is it something completely different? I think that's the deeper underlying thing, my, my, my deeper thing with it. But the reason I don't do it is just because it's a waste of time. I mean, if I, uh, if I wanted to know that my friend Joey was like eating a taco on 3rd Street, I'd sign up for Facebook. Maybe you just need more interesting friends. You know, to be honest with you, I don't know anyone around my age who uses Facebook for anything but marketing. Mm. You know, people under 40 or 50 years old really, I don't think really use Facebook. I think it's mostly for, at this point, Yes. I think Facebook is mostly for the, the middle ages. The middle ages, there you go. I, I really do. I mean, most of my, my dad and my mom are on it in their yes. 60s, and um, lots of my older friends in their 50s enjoy finding people from their past on Facebook. Yes. But the whole idea that, you know, Facebook represents this thing, and so does Twitter, that um, self-expression is a form of entertainment. And I don't, or even amusement. I don't think self-expression is a form of amusement. And I think we've entered a, you know, there used to be a time that you had to um, fight to get a column in a magazine, fight to be a journalist, fight to be a reporter, fight to um, get a mic in your hand and speak to thousands of people. You could always go out to the park and stand on a bread box and yell if you want to. Um, and that's what I see Twitter and Facebook as. A bunch of people standing in the park on their soapbox, screaming that they're having a taco on 3rd Street. The fact that I'm here get doing this interview is different than Facebook. It is different than a soapbox. Um, I don't think actors' opinions are very important about the world. And I don't think most actors think their ideas are important about the world. But uh, there are a lot of people out there that have um, gone to school, changed the world, written uh, theses about really big subjects. And when people do interviews with them, you know, TED Talks or uh, if they're on Larry King or, you know, those sorts of things, I think those people have kind of earned a right to, they're, they're professionals, they're, they're, they're specialists, they're, um, they actually have earned the right to have an opinion about certain things. And that's why you know, I don't know, I just, I feel like we, 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 we read message boards about things instead of uh, going to someone who might actually know, you know? And I do it too, I'm not saying I'm above it, I go to Yelp instead of, uh, instead of reading. Crowdsourcing. Right, yeah, absolutely. And I think in some ways there's a lot that can be gained from, uh, from that level of like uh, crowd kind of uh, input. but. I think, it's, I think it's a scary road, and I don't think we've fully seen the implications of what uh, a society that depends on, on that for our uh, relationships is. I think you bring up a great point about how things are more valuable if you have to work for it. It's in that struggle that you're able to really get to a point where you value certain things. So this idea, if you get on a plane for two hours to see your friend's child, there's a certain amount that you, it's a precious moment versus a passing glance of a photo on, on Facebook. And there's something very different about being in front of someone and having a back and forth conversation. It's very different than sending a message and then the next day getting a message and sending one. And you're sending it to 50 people. You're sending it to 2,000 people. You're not just sending it to one person. So it's no longer an intimate relationship. It's uh, no relationship becomes special. They all become uniform. And I, I've never been on Facebook. Never had a Facebook account. I, I really never looked at Twitter. Have you even peeked at it? Yeah, sure, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> looked, but I, looked across. Absolutely, but I don't know enough about it to be to, to sit here and talk about yes. it. To be honest with you, I really don't. Um, but it's more the general concept of yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's all I know. We didn't even talk about Vaishnavi. One second. Oh yeah, he rose a good point. You, on the other hand, I was saying, okay. Are you from okay. Canada? Yes. Where, where are you from in Canada? Ottawa. Good I for you, man. I moved down here 12 years ago. Wonderful, man. I love Canada. You love Canada? I do. You probably don't, 
What's that? Probably been to Vancouver and. I've been every. I've been more places in Canada than you have. Really? Regina. Yeah, You've been to Regina. What's in New Regina? New Brunswick. Well, I've been there. You have. Um, been to Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg, Whistler, BC. Yeah, what's in Canada? Acting. <laughs> Good unions, cheap taxes. Uh, be because it's just it's it's one of those roles, and she loves acting. And uh, there's a lot of people in our industry who don't. You really? Know? Wow. I shouldn't say a lot. I, I, I shouldn't speak. Because I always think acting is a hard thing. Like, you guys love it to be in. <laughs> yeah, and I think people go through phases with it. I mean, I used, to, I used to explain my love for acting like, you know, I've been doing this 27 years, and my love for acting isn't exactly like the first two months with a girl it's, or, or a man, depending on your preference. Um, it's like being married for 25 years. You love them, but it's not that kind of butterfly in the stomach love. It's, it's much deeper and it's, uh, it's more, much more complex, you know? Uh, and I think actors who have been in it for a long time, sometimes, you know, sometimes things get stagnant or dull or uh, it's easy to take it for granted or, uh, and we all go through phases of, of different levels of that. Uh, but there are a lot of people who uh, might love acting, but they don't, uh, they don't want to do 15 hours of work a day, <laughs> you know? And yes. I don't blame them for that, but a role like this demands somebody who has that level of passion and, and, and commitment. That's the one, thank you. Commitment, that other C word. What's the first C word? I don't know, I just realized that passion started with a P and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I, know, I know another P word. <laughs> Why? I don't know, you said you knew another C word. I know another P word. <laughs> I'm thinking of a C word and a P word that are both similar. <laughs> Canada. I, you know. That's a C word. That's yes. C word. Parentheses, a P word. A little random that you pick parentheses. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. That's an odd one. But you do deal in writing, so. Exactly. All right. um, so Ask me more questions. You want more questions? Well, you know, I, I figure you're going there anyways, right? Maybe not. Maybe oh, I'll come start. on. So, um, Stark Threes. Yeah, um, what's that? What's a Stark Three? We can always Stark Threes. We can always go somewhere else. Why do you keep always... adjusting this one? Oh, I get different. So it looks like we have ten cameras. Oh, I understand. So it looks like there's like cameras all over the place. Yeah, yes. What's your favorite adult beverage that you love to sip on? Sip. Um, I would say guzzle, but then, you know, that might be yeah, healing I, problems. I drink gin martinis. Gin martinis. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, John Slattery actually kind of got me started on those. <laughs> we went out to dinner a couple years ago in New York, and I've never been much of a martini guy, but uh, he ordered a martini, and it was just damn delicious. And I've just been drinking them since. Uh, 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 um, I love Thai food. Uh, I love Thai food, but really only in L.A. Next time you're in L.A., go to Thai Town on Hollywood Boulevard and any place. Order Morning Glory and just sit there and remember that I was the one who brought that deliciousness to your face. <laughs> oh, I'm sure to Facebook Yes. I'm sure you will. You look like you own Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. It would be some irony if you were own Facebook and you were like behind a camera doing this interview. Or do you know what irony is? The opposite of wrinkly. Wrinkly. <laughs> wrinkly. Wrinkly. Which you aren't yet. He's never used an iron. Look at him. He's right out of college. What's my third? You just complimented him by calling him out of college. He's 14 years old. <laughs> what's, what's the next one? I feel comfortable with this thing. Okay. Final question, which I'm really curious about. What's your favorite gadget? <laughs> What do you mean? You can interpret the word any way you want to. What's your favorite gadget? I like chains. You like chains? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How many shades of gray is that? <laughs> She's gone now. What is my favorite gadget? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my computer. Your computer? Yeah, probably my computer. I read scripts on it. Well, thank you. Vanessa, Thanks, Deuteronomus. Remember the Alamo. Alamo. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Canada. What the fuck? There's a casino. Thanks. <laughs> nice.